Okay, so this video lesson is going to focus on the poem Letters from Yorkshire by Maura Dooley and it appears on the AQA Love and Relationships Anthology section. Okay, so a bit of context. Dooley was born in Cornwall. She lived in Yorkshire for a few years before moving to London where she now lectures. A lot of her work and interests lie in understanding the past and the future and how they converge into what we call the present. Other themes include relationships and friendship. And this poem was published in 2002 and it focuses more on the friendship slash relationship between two people. OK, what's it about? Well, it's about the narrator and her feelings of envy at the life her male friend is living. He lives in the country growing vegetables and so on, while she lives in the city engaging in far less important work, as far as she's concerned. The letters she receives from him help her to feel connected to him and his way of life. The mood is reflective, yet positive. The title, the plural letters in the title imply the poet receives many letters and that they are both looked forward to and welcomed. And themes covered include nature, longing, separation and friendship. <clears throat> OK, so I'm going to talk about form, structure, language and imagery before uh, doing a more line by line analysis of the poem. Uh, before I get into form and structure, I'm going to um, speak about method and meaning. Uh, examiners are looking for you to identify technique, poetic devices used, that's the method, but to, to, to secure the top grades you need to explore meaning. So what effect, what impact do these um, techniques have? I'll show you what I mean here. Form. So the poem is written in free verse, allowing it to flow more naturally, perhaps like a letter. So there's your method and there's your meaning. It contains five three-line stanzas known as tersets. Which, that's your method, which may reflect the disconnection she feels from her male friend and also that way of life. There's your meaning. The lack of rhyme scheme and use of enjoyment adds to this reflective sense. OK, I'm not going to keep doing method and meaning, but there, I've just illustrated for you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So when you're anal analysing this poem and you're comparing it to another poem, you must talk about, you must identify the techniques, but you must also explore the meaning. So the first three stanzas highlight how different their lives are whilst the final two reveal that they have a deep bond, in spite of the distance that separates them. Um, some comments on language and imagery. The poet uses nature to explore her feelings. She yearns for the simplicity of his lifestyle, echoed in the use of monosyllabic words, you, out there, in the cold. Simple physical verbs, digging, planting, emphasising his connection to nature. This juxtaposes her work, feeding words into a blank screen, implying her dissatisfaction with what she does. Though she dislikes the icy distance between them, their spiritual souls are still in sync through their letters. OK, so before I um, um, reveal the annotations, just a, a little kind of generic observation about the poem. The poem begins in third person, then moves to direct address and second person in the second stanza. OK, and right, <clears throat> so the poem. In February, digging in his garden, planting potatoes, he saw the first lapwings return and came indoors to write to me, his knuckles singing as they reddened in the warmth. It's not romance, simply how things are. You out there in the cold, seeing the seasons. Turn, seeing the seasons turning. Me with my heart full of headlines feeding words onto a blank screen. Is your life more real because you dig and sow? So, in February has connotations of winter and everything that brings, planting potatoes, plosive sounds reflecting the repetitive nature of his work, um, his knuckles singing, this implies he's enjoying his work, his, the personification reflects the delight he feels as they reddened in the warmth. It's not romance, um, the, the narrator views his lifestyle as quite romantic and idealistic, but for him it's just mundane, natural, it's what he does. So it's not romance, it's not romance, could reflect their relationship or could be just how he sees his work. It's not a romantic lifestyle, as the narrator might think. It's just reality for him. You out there in the cult, seeing the seasons turning, this enjoyment, which is a continuation of a line, so no end stops, reflecting the contrast between the two lives, but also how they're connected, remember, method and meaning. Feeding words into a blank screen, Metaphorical language here, contrasting her feeding words into a computer whilst he's feeding people, growing vegetables and so on. Her work, as a consequence, seems insignificant by comparison. Is your life more real because you dig and sow? So a rhetorical question at the centre of the poem implies this is the focal point of the poem. She's questioning 
you know, her work choices, if you like, and comparing them unfavourably to what he does. And the final two stanzas. You wouldn't say so, breaking ice on a water butt, clearing a path through snow. Still, it's you who sends me word of that other world, pouring air and light into an envelope, so that at night, watching the same news in different houses, our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. You wouldn't say so, so implies a, an intimacy and a close relationship that, you know, she knows what he thinks and, it, it, you know, he doesn't agree with her idealising of his lifestyle. Breaking ice on a water butt, more natural imagery, emphasising his connection with nature. Pouring air and light into an envelope. She kind of um, highlights how she feels about receiving these letters. She loves to hear from and about him. Almost a magical description, highlighting how she romanticises his life. Our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. Again, spiritual language reflects their deep connection, our soul, soulmates almost. Icy miles, she dislikes the distance between them, but the letters they receive bridge that gap and keep, and keep ensuring their friendship is, remains strong and close. Okay, so um, not, not the most complex of poems there. They're slightly ambiguous in terms of whether they're, it's a, fr a poem about friendship or a, a poem about a relationship, um, a, a long-distance relationship, um, perhaps. But that's up to you to decide. Um, plenty there to, anal to analyse and prepare you for your um, comparative question on the exam. Um, just a summary then of the poetic devices used, free verse, tercets, enjambment, natural imagery, active verbs, juxtaposition and personification. You know, again, method and meaning, the, identify these techniques, absolutely great, compare them in, in, to, to the other poem, but also explore the meaning. Um, some useful vocab to use when analysing this poem, monosyllabic, distance, irregular, friendship, fulfilling, and I'm sure you've got plenty more yourselves. And of course, the key point is what to compare it to elsewhere on the anthology well a follower also features relationship and natures and nature even or distance in a relationship and nature in sonnet 29 but a very different mood and that's how you should consider comparing poems not because they um both sonnets for example or both have one long stanza it's more about a conceptualized response so you um you compare them in terms of the main ideas behind them so distance in a relationship is is significant here but Sonnet 29 is different because it's very much a physical romantic relationship she's yearning for she wants her husband her, part, her lover to be with her physically not just emotionally okay um hopefully that's been useful to you do check in for all the other videos and um good luck bye bye